All right, everybody, welcome to the shop. I got a friend in here from Chicago. Stu, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Stu with Yellow Mug, and this is a collaboration we've been chatting about for a couple months now. Months, yeah, but we're finally here. It's exciting. We're gonna be building the map, and you know, the only thing to do once you've actually finished the map is be those guys who yeah. like to watch the world burn. <laughs> <laughs> So we just jumped right into it with some of these 5x10 sheets of 10 gauge hot rolled steel. We're cutting out Asia first because that's the largest continent and everything was going pretty well but as you can hear in the background my co-workers are doing some sanding and we just happened to pop a fuse in the electrical panel that feeds the sub panel next to the table. So a quick trip to Lowe's later and we were back in business with new fuses. Okay, so all the way down there is the room with the fuse panel that runs this sub panel right here. And we've, you know, we didn't have to do anything in here. It was all down there. We fixed that, everything's working again. But here's what we were in the middle of. We had a cut that started right here and had run all the way over to here when the machine cut off. So what we're gonna do is load up the exact same file Except in my G-code generator, I'm gonna tell it to start here again. That's its default start. And then we're just gonna run the cut backwards. So we'll go this way and meet back up here and then manually kill the torch. And that will deal with you know, the fact that we had that mistake. And then we'll go back and finish out the rest of the sheet the way we should have in the first place. So the machine now is just gonna to continue to run that cut path. I've just manually turned the torch off. If this is the best thing to do, it takes a little bit of time, but we know this machine is gonna stay exactly aligned with how it should be. While that torch head is moving, it has some mass and momentum. If we then tell the machine to stop, in the computer, it just stops. You know, it says we were at whatever coordinate and that's where we stop. But in reality, that momentum is gonna move it a little bit and we'll get a step over because of that. The computer is set up for all of the rest of this cut, all the other islands and continents, and it will turn the torch back on when it gets to that point. So this is just set it and forget it as long as nothing goes wrong. And we don't blow any more fuses. <laughs> Okay, so there's Asia. Takes up pretty much my whole four by eight table. It's gonna look pretty good. Okay, so the uh, finishing process for getting these ready to go is basically we attack any dross that's on the face with a wire brush. And then I'm gonna have Stu trying out some of these weld coat C-prime discs. They're a ceramic abrasive that just lasts. So I've been a big fan of them. There you go. Have at it, man. Obviously, this is the sort of project where I could have just done this, put it on a pallet, and shipped it up to Stu, but he wanted to be involved in the project and wanted to get a little bit more experience. So he flew down, came into the shop for the day, and I pretty much got out of his way and just let Stu get all the time he could uh, doing metalworking. So to mount all these continents to the wall, Stu's gonna use a French cleat. The part on the wall is just gonna be wood. The part on the back of the continents needs to be steel. What we have is a piece of three quarter inch angle iron. We're gonna lay that flat onto a piece of one inch flat bar, eighth inch thick. And we're gonna weld those together. We'll do a whole strip and then cut it up as needed. The reason we're doing a bunch of tacks to attach the pieces of this French cleat as opposed to you know, fully welding it out is really just to avoid warp and the tacks are gonna be plenty strong. So as we did that, we got a little bit of warp in it. Now Stu's gonna do the other side, he's gonna pull some of that warp back out and then we'll just manually pull the rest of it out. Push down right there. Get some of the bend back out. 
By welding in an intelligent way and then manually bending the warp back out of our French cleat here, we got the warp in the longest piece to under an eighth of an inch, and that's plenty for what we're doing. All right, so when we cut out our continents, we put these tabs on there, and those are in a straight line. They run east to west, if you will. And that lets us, you know, keep our French cleats lined up correctly. So we're gonna start off by drawing a reference line on the back, and then our French cleats will run parallel to that line above, below, wherever, but parallel. Start with one tack. Now we use that to make this parallel off of. So these are those tabs we left so we can line this up. Now we don't need them anymore, and we intentionally put them in places where it's a straight line to remove them. So you'll see that as Stu attaches the French cleat with just a bunch of tacks, again, so we don't heat up through the sheet, we also put a tack on the ends of the French cleat left and right, and that's to give it a little bit more stability because, again, we are just attaching it with tacks. Woo! <laughs> that is nice! They're from Stronghand. They sent me out too, but they're kind of like them so far. So with uh, me just relaxing there, I left Stu to just knock a whole continent out by himself. And after seeing my process, I think twice, maybe three times, uh, he just finished the rest of them out. So we'll just run this little time lapse of one. And you can see it's really not that long of a process. There's about 15 minutes of footage all sped up. Now as Stu makes another piece of the metal portion of the French cleat, I'm preparing all the little islands that make up the world uh, just by wire brushing them. And then I'm gonna go back in and tack on some quarter twenty bolts. I'm just tacking right from the head. And we did burn off the galvanized coating on there, or the zinc coating with some muriatic acid just so that we're not huffing that with this much welding. One or two is not a big deal. But when you're doing uh, 30 or 40 like we did here, eh, you know, really don't want to be breathing that. And I will tell you what, we've got a big update coming to the channel really soon. Uh, we're going to be adding stud welding to the processes in the shop. And <laughs> I had the stud welder here, but I did not yet have studs in. I was waiting on the shipment. So these ones got done by hand. You get a good comparison to how to do it faster with a nice piece of equipment. All right, Stu, last one, just Asia left. Home stretch. Let's do it. So all the other continents had two French cleats holding them to the wall. It's pretty easy to get that lined up on install, but Asia has three. So it's crucial here that we keep all these parallel off that first guideline. Uh, so we spent a lot of time getting all that lined up correctly. Nothing left to do but grind them. It's been a good one. We sat, we sat here, put the whole thing together with the Pro Pulse 200. What do you think of that? Oh, HTP, man, this thing's killer. <laughs> I love it. We're it's gonna be added to my arsenal soon, I have a feeling. So with that, Stu flew home to Chicago. I got all the pieces crated up and had them shipped up to him. And on an unrelated trip, I was up in the area to check out the install after Stu had everything taken through powder coating. And then also to play a little round a little bit at his shop. All right, Stu, first, first run of the Shark CNC that you picked up out of a school auction, right? <laughs> I did. 
right. What's this the uh, be a little nuts? What's and the... they say don't drink in the workshop. So don't <laughs> ignore this. It's low speed. Forget that noise. So we're not sure if our coordinate system's right. So what was the response? Okay, we're gonna give it a shot. I think that's what we said. Right, yeah, good. but it's you know quarter to one in Chicago, yeah. so we may as well. Needless to say, after a couple beers and a um, piece of machinery neither of us had used before, we really did not have everything figured out. But it's part of the process. All right, guys, so we're here. Did a big drive, ended up in Chicago. Let's go see this map. It's already been installed. It's awesome. Two. I can't wait to show it to you. Yeah. Alright guys, here it is, finished project. I'm gonna have some info for Stu on the screen right there. You wanna check out what he's working on? Turned out pretty good, right? That's good stuff. Thanks for collaboration. We'll be behind it. Install our back behind us too. <laughs> Say our right. oh, guys. Good job. Thanks. I actually met Stu when I was up in Chicago on my big maker road trip, meeting a bunch of people. If you guys want to see that video, check the link out right there. We'd love to have you subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.